What up, players? Warboss Tay up in this mood. Got a little Warboss tutorial for you today on how to magnetize an Ogre Gut Plate. This is really just a, a magnetization tutorial for anybody who wants to know how I do mine. I find that 3 by 32 by 1 16th, uh, 330, 32nd of an inch by 1 16th of an inch magnets work the best for small um, troop sized limbs and stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is take our ogre um, model here who's got a little space for his gut plate and the lucky thing for this is that it actually has a hole drilled um, ready because these gut plates have little knobs on the back of them that are meant to slot into the actual model. But um, if this hole wasn't drilled into the gut plate then what I would do would be to take a little pin vise drill such as this citadel one and I would start by drilling a hole into the gut plate and then widening the hole using a hobby knife and um, what that does is it makes the hole wide enough for the magnet but it keeps you from when you're applying too much pressure um, drilling too far in so um, I found that widening using a hobby knife is is pretty pretty good for that. So um, seeing as how the hole is already there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of super glue into the hole, and then I'm going to take one side of this magnet and pop it in, and then I'm going to um, slide my thumbnail over it and out so that the rest of the magnets come away from it. And a lot of people do these do this differently. If you do it differently, then I'd oops, I'd love to hear what your what your technique is, but this is just how I roll. So I got my super glue, gorilla glue. I'm gonna put it into the little hole in the gut plate. Then I'm gonna take my stack of magnets and I'm going to put my thumbnail at the end of the top one. Then I'm going to slide it off and into the hole. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry about that. It's a little hard with this with this uh, double-handed weapon. I think what I'm going to do to make it easier is I'm going to take my my index finger and go from the top. Usually I go with my thumb, but this time, because of the lack of room, I'm going to go from my index finger instead. So once the magnet is inside, I put the second magnets away so they don't interfere. And then I just make sure it's slotted inside. Okay, and then now, because I um, had to do that just kind of to get it off the off the stack of magnets and put it in. I don't really know which side the polarity is facing, so I'm gonna let that dry for a day and then I'm gonna come back and then when we figure out using the stack of magnets which side is which, then we're gonna put the opposite sides into these gut plates. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry, what I can do is take a hobby knife and cut off these knobs since the knob uh, the space was filled with the magnet and do a little bit of drilling and um, just make sure that there's space for the magnet to glue in to the gut plate side. That's really bad. You shouldn't ever cut towards yourself. You should cut away. is just easier. <laughs> okay, so we're going to clean the edges just a little bit. Don't worry folks, I'm a trained professional. 
my fingers have been cut so much over the years. It's with my with my with my hobby knife. It's unbelievable. I'm gonna drill a little hole. So what I'm doing is at a certain point, I'm not cutting in depth-wise, I'm just cutting a hole, I'm widening the, the edges of the hole so that it can accommodate the size of the magnet that I'm using. I'm just gonna check, and as you can see, the magnet fits in the size hole, so I'm gonna let this hole, um, I'm gonna keep it there as it is, I'm gonna clean up the edges, and um, I'm gonna leave it like it is. So the hole depth-wise is is deep enough to hold one of these magnets, so so that is fine. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna do the rest, the same thing with these other two gut plates. So you can see this one from the man eater sprue already has a little gap on the inside, so I don't really have to worry about drilling the hole into that one. It's already deep enough to fit one of these magnets. So all I have to do is snip off the knob on this gut plate and drill a hole into that one. Sweep all these shavings into a little trash can next to my table. Yeah, you want to go for the middle because you want to go for where the knob was because that's where the hole is on the actual model. Oop. Actually, push the the drill head into my pin vise. That's not good. Of the hole, perfect. Okay, so now I am going to cut the video and skip ahead, clean up my little work area, get all these resin shavings into the trash, and then when we get back to the next part of this video, this glue will be dried, oops, and we will be ready to um, check the polarity and then glue the magnets into the gut plates itself. See you at the rest of this video. 
Okay, so I've left this to dry overnight and now the magnet inside the ogre's gut plate is dry, the super glue. So I'm lining up my magnets so that I know which side is going to go into the actual gut plate piece. So first we're going to glue the man-eater pirate one with the brace of pistols in case we want to use that for our tyrant. And then we make sure that we know which side of the magnets is going to align to it. So it's this end is going to go into the into the gut piece plate. So I'm going to angle that so I know which side is bottom. I'm going to get some super glue into the gut plate. And then I am going to slot that in and then slide the column out with my index finger. This particular one, because the hollow was already built to be this big, um, you have a little bit less control. But. should be fine. So I have the column of magnets in one hand and the magnet. Get off my fingernail. Side there. And. Sitting there nicely, um, just because there's so much space around the magnet, I'm just going to add a little bit more super glue to hold it in place. And then I'm going to leave this to dry for the evening. The other magnet we are going to put on our tyrant here is the one for the with the hand weapon on it. I decided not to go with the one with the horns just because it looks a little too busy with the actual model. I think using the one with the horns for a model holding two hand weapons out of his sides would be a lot better visually. So I'm going to go with the one, the gut plate that's got his hand weapon slung to it, which looks like this. So I drilled the hole in the back, as you remember from the beginning of the video, big enough to hold the magnets, and I see where, which end of the magnets we're going to slot in. So. Holding that on the side, knowing that that's the end that's going to go into the, into the model, I put the glue in. And as you can see, because this hollow is a lot tighter, there's less room, the magnet's not really going to move around. So I use my nail to slightly separate the magnet to get ready for uh, pushing into the hollow. So it's right about to come off. And then I put it in the correct way, make sure my nail is covering it, and take away the rest of the magnets and that is the best way of doing it with the the other piece that I just showed you the pirate piece it's a lot harder because the hole is a lot bigger there's room for the magnet to move around but this was this is usually the best way to do it drill the hole in get your um, get your column of magnets and then knowing which side the polarity is supposed to go in separate the end piece just a little bit and then slot it in and then drag the rest of the column out and off to the side so we're going to let this dry for a little while, um, I'm going to leave it 24 hours and then we will wrap up this video and show you how the two gut plates fit onto the model. I'm going to keep them apart so the magnets don't attract each other. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in the end of this video. Alright, so after giving our glue some time to dry, we are back and um, I did notice that because of how wide the two stocks handles of the pistols are it's a little hard to fiddle to get them in when you have the tyrant configured in this way but if you're using a tyrant with two hand weapons at its sides or you're able to configure your uh, model so that the arms aren't as much in the way then uh, it'll be easier but the gut plate do does still fit in snugly does fit very well so this is our tyrant with two with a double-handed weapon and a brace of ogre pistols very cool and taking that off it's still the magnet still does uh, stick to the, the polarity of the magnet is enough that when you as long as you have it up there it'll it'll connect so that's awesome right on and uh, I don't know what he does with his double-handed weapon right when when he decides to take the pistols out it's a mystery We'll never know. And uh, here is his 
ogre plate with the blade on it, which we can see there. And <laughs> it's like a little little bayonet for running forward and causing impact hits. And he's also got his hand weapon sheathed right there. So this fits much better. Just snugly slide it in and the magnet sticks sticks it in place. So there you go, that's my war boss tutorial on how I magnetize an ogre tyrant. Again, these magnets that I use are from Primal Horizon and they are three thirty seconds of an inch by one sixteenth of an inch. You get fifty of them. Not sure if you get these online. I think I got these from my from my hobby store. But you can also get these from uh, I know Mini Wargaming sells them on their website. They sell magnets there and. Um, Rare Earth, I think, also has magnets for sale online. But the great thing about Primal Horizon, not sure how many other companies do this, but it shows you what the measurements are and what you can use them for. So, as you can see, this one has for uh, is suitable for troop weapons and small gear, troop limbs and bases, which is really where this comes in. And if you have a 15 millimeter scale tanks and vehicles, and then as the magnets get bigger, it shows what they're more appropriate for. Um, I did see the 1 16th by 1 seconds of an inch, this first column, and it is so small. I think it's a little too small for what what um, what I would be doing. It's basically for like really small gear, um, kit packs and stuff like that, and I, I don't even know how I would begin to apply that. But like I said, for our purposes, for, for ma magnetizing limbs and stuff, that's, that's what I use. I even used these magnets, these size magnets, to magnetize Lewis the Necromancer's Sweet Ride, his corpse cart, and these um, Balefire accessories. So I just put magnets into both sides as well as magnets into there. And Badboosh! There you go. As well as the, um, I forgot what this one is called, but the the bell one. This one's a little bit more wonky because the magnets stick out at a funny angle, but it still slots in and it's still still okay to me. I, I don't know how I would be able to fit it by cutting any more because the the uh, lengths of the two of the two center pieces, this as well as the bell fire, are a little bit different. So they're not as wide. One's a little bit less wide than the other. But um, these are the magnets that I use, and uh, that's how. I, that's how I roll whenever I magnetize. All you need is your magnets, hobby knife for widening the, um, the entry point of the hole, and a pin vise for drilling the hole to begin with. So let me know if you have any questions. I know that when I use a hobby knife, I've grown pretty unsafe with how I, how I cut and trim and shave. So um, the, it's, it's always best to shave away from your body. It's just over the years I've kind of grown accustomed to going the opposite way and, and kind of gauging how, how safely to do it on my own. Although I know that I'm probably doing it um, not as safely as I could be. So, 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 so make sure you're safe at all times, whatever you're doing, be safe and take your vitamins and all that stuff. Alright, we'll see you in the next one.